What's going on guys? Welcome back to Mind Over Marketing. I'm here with Aaron Fraser and our special guest, Adam Holland, who's been really excited to be able, um, we're really excited to have him pop out here. And uh, one of the things I wanted to be able to do here, if you want to touch on a little bit for a sec. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we got uh, we got this cool guy named Adam, like uh, Jang said. Um, we, well, I think, Jang, you've known him for a while, I think, but personally for me, um, when was it, Adam? It was, it was Activate, and it was that time. Yeah, and I think our first time meeting, we were throwing elbows at each other, um, fighting for the number one spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were about to throw down, and uh, since then, we've actually built a pretty good, uh, pretty good little friendship uh, behind the scenes over the interwebs. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. We got him coming out. All the Twitters. <laughs> All the Twitters. <laughs> so... Hell yeah, man. So you want to pop out and I guess well, well, we can give so him a little in intro. Little, yeah, a little bit of a context just so all you guys kind of know here. Uh, obviously, Adam Holland has been a 10-year internet marketing veteran. Mm. He's an entrepreneur, speaker, author, and coach who's generated over $4 million in revenue and a hell of a lot more for his clients. Uh, and he's the founder of the marketing agency, Adam Holland Marketing Inc., lead generation uh, company, guaranteed prospect, and over a dozen courses, eBooks, programs, uh, he really knows what he's talking about when it comes to marketing and all, all encompassing. So it was perfect to be able to have him out here. We were really excited uh, yeah. to have him here. And uh, you know what? We should throw this in here. He wanted to throw in his little trademark here. Yeah, he threw me that trademark. <laughs> I was like, I was like, let's see if we do this. We're yeah. going to do hashtag this. Hashtag it. Hashtag <laughs> it there, Adam. Uh, the ha hashtag, hashtag marketing yeah. boner. Mark. Like when you get something, when you hear a, a business or marketing strategy where you're just like, oh man, that's killer. Hashtag marketing boner. You know, so that's that's trademarked. Nobody else can use that but me. And uh, just, we're just letting, we're just setting the foundation for a great Absolutely, podcast. Absolutely, man. Guys. That was, and I think I just I just heard that trademarked uh, saying here just a couple days ago, um, and it was yeah, it was perfect. Nice little hashtag in the comment or in the message yeah. messages. Yeah, it's like when when like remarketing was born, we were like, man, you can get people that have like been on your website. You can target them with ads and bring them back to your website. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like marketing boner. Oh my god, you know, it's just like, yeah, we get we get we get horny over this stuff because it's like these these things like systems automation. It's just another great way to connect with our prospects, change some lives, and make it a, a win-win and make some money, you know, in, in the meantime as so well. So we're getting so, a little bit of, you know, I'm, I'm loving your water bottle. Yeah. Here, right. Thumbs up. Right. You got this. So we're getting a little bit of feedback right now with Adam's volume being super low. So, um, I don't know what we could. So look that would at be, that would be up. on the zoom. So your zoom mic, what's the mic you're using for zoom there? Um, my, my zoom is muted. Oh, so they can't hear you. Hmm. They're so saying they that your your your, your Zoom low. mic needs to be able to hear you, but your sound from Zoom needs to be muted. You like uh, test? How about Ooh. now? Hopefully, hopefully everybody can hear me now. Yeah, we'll we'll find out because you know you know how Zoom works. We got about a ten to fifteen yeah. second delay. Oh yeah. So it's a it, we got a little buffer yeah. room, you know. So 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 they they missed the hilarity of uh, marketing boner and. Uh, <laughs> us us go you know going yeah, fisticuffs. Yeah. i think so so <laughs> what's uh way better yeah there okay. we go way better so maybe Perfect. we can even start oh, with a so nice little intro for the for the live again i think i think they got the gist right there marketing and boners <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i think i think they got the gist of it yeah. right um and so basically this is awesome dude first of all thanks for coming out adam yeah. uh really appreciate you coming out and i know this is going to be a lot of fun i know we've had a lot of fun conversations already so it'll be a fun fun one to just free flow with Absolutely. that'll be really cool so even if we were to go to give you a little bit more to give everyone a little bit more context obviously we get a little bit of your intro but if we were to go back uh what was even like so 10-year veteran in your marketing space what was going on in your life like what beforehand what were you doing before that before you even got into marketing well, so first of all, thanks for having me on, guys. It's a pleasure. I love uh, I love chatting with you. I love uh, learning from you. And let me see if I can actually. I'm getting like double audio or something too. Whatever. I got it. Yeah, I got to mute the zoom or whatever. So we good? Okay. So basically, uh, when I first got started, it wasn't even like online. I was this was 2004, give or take. So about 14 years, a little over 14 years ago now, where. 
Uh, I was going to school for electrical engineering, going to get my degree, going to go out and work for probably some big like defense contractor or some big company making, you know, stupid money and like just, you know, king of the world kind of feeling. And then I actually met some engineers and what they did on a daily basis. And I was like, shit, I don't want to do that for 30 or 40 <laughs> years. You know, like it just, it just didn't re really resonate with me. So I, I figured then, you know, I might go into technical sales because I really, you know, I had, I had the brains to do the engineering stuff, but I wanted to work with people, you know, and, and it's really difficult to find people with a technical ability, but also have the ability to communicate effectively. Um, usually that's completely, you know, two different skills, very, two very different skill sets, left brain, right yeah. brain, right? So to find somebody that can do both is kind of rare. So, you know, keep, keep that little feather in your hat here as I continue in the story. Uh, basically, as I um, figured out, I, I kind of got introduced to uh, network marketing, got involved with a couple of different companies there, found some moderate successes, you know, here and there, but it just it wasn't working for me. So I went online and I said, you know what, if I could just find more leads for my business, I can, I can grow any business. And if I can figure out marketing, if I can generate prospects for myself or for any business, like that's the ticket, <laughs> you know? And uh, I came across this, uh, this punk kid who was like 21, 22 years old. And uh, he had just had a month where he made like 12 or 15 grand or something like that. And within a couple of years he had done, I want to say about 12 million. Wow. And I luckily found him and kind of helped, you know, I don't want to say wrote his coattails, but definitely he was one of the first mentors of mine. Uh, he's gone on to start a solar company here and is, you know, I think he just turned 30, 32 or something, wow. something like that. And he's had a solar company now for like five years. You're so talking about Jay bud He's, he's definitely, yeah. So it was one of my first big influences uh, online. It was finding this, this kid. Uh, yeah, his, his name's Jonathan Bud. If you guys want to look him up or whatever, but you know, he he was he was clearly like this. His capture page video, like he's like I'm, you know, I'm Mister Jonathan Bud. I'm like, dude, you look like twelve in this video. Like you calling yourself Mister? Like give me a break. And then he's just like, and I'm like, I'm looking at the the video, and it's got behind him like family photos and like a three in one printer. And I'm like, you're in like your mom's home office. Don't even give me this crap that you're a business owner. I'm like just judging the hell out of him, you know, whatever. And he's like, and last month I made 12.2. And I'm like, what? He goes, $1,000. I'm like, who says 12.2,000? <laughs> like, what the hell? You know, but it was like, it was his attitude. It was his charisma, you know, and it was just, it was so, it was exciting to see the look in somebody's eyes when they're going and making it happen. Mm -hmm. I know that resonates with, a lot of people listening to this right now is like when you look in the mirror and you look at yourself and you say, you know what, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make things happen. Like it's just an, an unspoken thing. Like you meet somebody in an event and they got like the eye of the tiger kind yeah. of thing going on. It's just like, you know, yeah, this, this person's going to make something happen and you can kind of tell it's a vibe they give off or whatever. And I kind of, I was, I was attracted to that, you know, it was definitely this magnetic thing where I'm like, I got to learn from this guy. And Got lots of different mentors, started make, making a little bit of money online uh, within the first you know few months, you know, because I had developed a lot of skill sets. I had worked on myself for three or four years, really, prior to that, personal development, marketing skills, and communication, sales, those kind of things. And I took those skill sets online, and it allowed me to kind of leverage those skill sets and make uh, a little bit of money uh, sooner. You know, I made like five grand my first like three or four months online when it took me probably three years to make that in network right. marketing, you know, whatever that, that yeah. full amount. Um, and I was like, yeah, like I can see the future. I'm going to fire my boss and I'm going to be free <laughs> and blah, blah. And uh, they, beat, they beat me to the punch. I was laid off from my job <laughs> in February 2008. And I was like, I was supposed to fire you, <laughs> not vice versa. Like this is bull. So, um, so what, what ended up happening was uh, it was like, it was a, you know, uh, a speed bump in the road. <laughs> it, was, it felt like a kick to the gut. Um, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I was just breaking down, crying in the fetal position, feeling sorry for myself. And uh, I thought to myself, though, and I don't know if it was, you know, a freaking angel, the universe talking to me. I don't know what it was, but it felt supernatural almost at the time where it was something was saying to me uh, this internal dialogue of what if this was meant to happen? What if this was the line in the sand that I needed to draw that opened up you know, the opportunity for the future. And uh, I had only been back to a job once in like the, like, I think it was the second year after that, where we wanted to start having kids. And my wife's like, we need insurance, blah, blah, you know, business was up and down. So I, I worked at a car dealership for like three oh, weeks. Man. I, think. I, I did and that I same like, stint three weeks. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, this is, yeah. 
and that's yeah. over. You know, so it was one of those things where like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna are you gonna come in for the sales meeting and get your business cards with your name on it now, and you get, pick up your polo because you've been with us. And I'm just like, this is horrible timing. I'm not coming in. I'm just, gonna, I'm just not because during my, I was so pissed off that I was working for somebody else, and it was the ball and chain where I felt like they literally had a rope at the dealership. And they'd pull on that rope or that chain while I was in bed and they yank it and pull me out of bed to get me <laughs> to, to the, the job. Floor. That's how <laughs> like that's yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Just plunk, oh yeah, you know. And it was just like a struggle to want to do anything like that. Uh, any kind of a job working for somebody else. I was already kind of like unemployable at that point because I had worked for myself for a year and a half, two years. Um, I don't know if I had done a few things before that as well that were really really, really part time. I'd never made like I think one job I had made like 12 grand that entire wow. year. So I had to make my business work or I was going to yeah. go hungry, yeah. you know, kind of a thing. Uh, but I put myself in a position where it was just like, let's burn all the bridges. Let's make it happen. I don't give a crap if I have an engineering degree, like entrepreneurship was my future. And uh, I, I knew what I needed to do. So I'm on the phone during my lunch breaks at that car dealership closing deals. And I remember I closed a deal. It was like, I think I made six or 700 bucks, you know, in, in a lunch break. And I'm like, I made that all week. I don't even think I made that all week because I was on a draw. It was like 500 bucks or something like that. Maybe even 300 bucks for 50 hours of work, you know, on minimum wage is the draw, you know, whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm totally not coming in, <laughs> you know, for the, for the weekend or whatever. So, um, I, and that was right when I had built a website that, uh, I had lots of projects that were up and down, but that website did like 60 grand in nine months, like 55 or 60 wow. grand in nine months when I had never made that in a year at any two jobs working at once, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever. And, uh, after that, I mean, it became, you know, instead of, man, how do I make money? It's, it's more like, what do I want to do to make yeah. money? What else, you know, what else can I do? Once you learn marketing, it's, it, it really opens up the doors to do whatever. And now, I'm starting a, a digital marketing agency for the wellness industry. I've got a list building course that I'm going to be coming out with cool. here soon. I've already launched plenty of courses. I've done lead generation for small businesses. I've done, like there's so many different projects, and it's and it's fun because I get to work on the projects I want to work on, and you know it's definitely yeah. freeing. So I know I kind of went on a no, rant there. But that was kind of like my life story in three minutes. Or no, whatever. it's 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 exactly <laughs> it's perfect, dude. And so now you get to a point where because this is ultimately, you know, I, I get especially when you first start an entrepreneurship, sometimes you got to do shit that you don't necessarily, you know, it's not the thing that you're the most fulfilled by. But once you get to the point of being able to like develop the skills and learn the insides and outs of marketing, you now can start to pick and choose how you want to apply. You got to kind of do what you need to do to learn the skill set. You know what I mean? And once you kind of get that down, now you have the freedom to be able to go, okay, how do I want to apply this? What do I want to be doing with this? Whether it's, I want to open up an agency or you want to do, you know, run your own courses, run a mastermind or whatever it is that you're wanting to be able to do. If it's, you're going to stick into the marketing space, uh, which is really cool. At what point did you, so like from the beginning of you, like potentially almost being an engineer, right? And then you, you know, you're doing network marketing, you tried online marketing. At what point was it like, okay, there's, there's, what has it, what hesitations first did you have of like going from a job to being an entrepreneur? And then like, when was the point where you were like, this is it, I can't go back. <laughs> like there's no turning back now. Well, um, when I first started, when I was in uh, college, I worked for vet, uh, Vector Marketing, selling Cutco knives for a short span of time. I don't know if you know anybody that's done that. So that was my first like hint at, wow, like doing sales, I could write my own paycheck. So instead of getting paid on a per hour basis, it's like, holy crap, like I can go and make two grand in commission in a couple of days pr potentially. And all of a sudden it's just like, damn, you guys getting feedback? Is that me? Uh, no, I, we aren't anymore. No, I just I, heard your dog dip, doing a little jingle there for a minute. That's about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was, I'm, I'm hearing like a hiss or something like that. I can, I can ignore it. So anyway, so, so basically what ended up happening was, uh, I kind of figured out that I can write my own ticket. I can, I can make something happen. And, uh, hold on a second. This is kind of like, we're about, louder. we're at about uh, 15 minutes live too. So we can probably start continuing and then pull out. You want to cut the live? Cut out the live. Cause that's probably where it's coming ah. from. So yeah, so basically when you're talking about uh, writing your own paycheck, it's it's this sense of not just accomplishment, but it's a sense of like control. It's just like I have power over my own domain. I have control of my own future, of my own destiny. And nobody can tell me what to do because now that I know I can write my own paycheck, I'm my own boss, I'm, I'm the, the king of my domain, whatever you want to call it. It's like there's, there's literally no, no turning back from that. And 
when I um, <clears throat> when I uh, <laughs> was in college and kind of figured out like, man, I kind of want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be, you know, whether it is sales, you know, entrepreneurship, owning my own business, whatever variation of, of it it was, I just knew that I wanted to be able to have a lot more freedom and have the time to enjoy it. And uh, some of the blowback from that was um, I had two cousins that were both, that had both gone to the same engineering college except their mom worked there. So they got a free ride and then they both got engineering jobs out of college. Whereas I did not have a free ride. I had a decent scholarship because I had good, great, decent grades in high school, but I still had like 20 something thousand in, in college debt. And I was working at Radio Shack in nice. the mall. So, <laughs> and then I've Shack. got like the, you know, what are you stupid kind of, kind of thing from my dad. Um, so there was definitely some outside pressures where it was just like, um, man, did I make the right decision? Man, this is embarrassing. I'm going to family events. I actually remember one of those cousins was, uh, I think it was his bachelor party or something like that. And I had to travel down to the city, down in New York city from upstate where I lived. And I like knew exactly how much money I had to spend. And I was just like, I'm not going to like buy all these drinks. And I'm going to like, I have to, if I have to drink water for dinner, because I know it's like, it's the city, it's going to be an expensive thing. So I'm like, yeah. I'm budgeting everything out. I'm like, I'm going to be conservative. Good to go. So then like the, uh, the soon to be father-in-law or whatever was like, Oh, let's do a round of shots or whatever. Okay. We're gonna do this. And then the night, the end of the night came and he's like, Oh, we're just, you know, divvy up the check evenly, no matter what, whatever you bought. And I'm just like, <laughs> like, what the, you know, so I literally had to go to my cousin whose bachelor party it was and ask him for money. Oh, wow. Because I didn't oh, have man. any additional money. So here, you know, here yeah. I was like broke as hell. I'm a year or two into my business, not being successful at all. And I, I knew something needed to change. So this is like, again, this is a couple years in where I'm, I'm at a college. I've got my degree, but I'd never went into engineering. I had bounced between a bunch of different jobs after that. I'm, I'm piling up credit card debt. My wife, uh, uh, she got a bunch of student loans and because she got too much student loans and they knew she was going to school for teaching, they wouldn't give her any more student loans because mm. they knew she'd never be able to pay them off. So <laughs> her mom, her parents said that her mom and dad didn't have much money as social workers. So she put two semesters of her college on a Macy's visa at like 28% interest. So wow. That was some more, that was a nice surprise after getting married, you know, obviously, you know, but uh, that was another huge motivation where I was like, damn, we got to make some money, honey. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so like, so when you talk about like burning bridges, you know, path, you know like no return, you know, path of no return or whatever, like something needed to happen. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and it's very, it's very humbling to uh, come from a background where like my parents definitely weren't rich. They were, they were divorced when I was five or six. I didn't, I never even really knew what money looked like really. I mean, I had a couple of like uncles, but that's, you know, distant, you know, kind of a thing wasn't, you know, yeah. wasn't really something that was, uh, was part of my experience growing up it was really learning about money or how, how to use it or how to apply it and how to manage it you know, instead of having it manage you, all those kind of things. Um, so, no wonder I was in, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in student loan debt, my wife in credit card debt. I wasn't making the money to make it happen. It was like, you know, something, something definitely needed to happen. And I knew the only way out was going to be, you know, taking the reins of a business and, uh, like I said, writing my own paycheck. So <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's the, the longer, a little bit longer of the version of the story, but it was, it was definitely a gut check, you know, uh, coming, coming out with that engineering degree and then being like, Hey, I work at the mall. For like a year, <laughs> yeah. before I try to get another job, you know, make making yeah. 28, 30, 30 grand a year at these various jobs and trying to pay off tens of thousands of dollars in debt. I never would have gotten out. Never would have bought a house. Never would have been able to buy a decent car. Never would have been, you know, been able to go on the trips that I've been on. Uh, my wife staying at home raising our kids up until they went back to school, and then she decided she wanted to go back to teaching and having the opportunity to say, oh, "If that's what you want to do, great," but if it gets too much just put in your two weeks, not a big deal, you know, mm -hmm. because that's, that's what doing her value it, doing, is, you know? Yeah. Doing it because yeah. you want to do it, knowing that you don't have to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. If it does get to it, put in your two weeks, you're good. It's not like, fuck, I have to be here. And if Stuck, not, yeah, yeah imagine, you know, we're done. imagine a teacher that can actually go to a board meeting. And if something is like really irking at the other teachers, but everybody's afraid to lose their job, if they bring it up, honey, just go ahead. 
rampage. Yeah. Doesn't, you know, doesn't yeah. matter. Like if you need to speak up, if you need to, you know, whatever. And luckily none of that's happened and she's getting accolades. You got like district teacher of the month and you know, wow. these gifts from students. It's like, wow. I'm like, this is clearly something this, she loves. Yeah, this is, this is a shows. little bit of a, a, a tangent, but like me, male ego, successful entrepreneur, my wife doesn't have to work. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. put myself in the back. And it was just like, it was a sense of pride for me, but then it was just mm-hmm. like, what does she want to do? Right. She wants to teach, but why? But, but no, 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 no. Yeah. hold on. You know, it's just like, and it, so that was a huge thing for me to like swallow that pill of like, okay, if you want to go back to teaching, fine. I really liked having you around the house. And I was really looking forward to chasing you around the house with the kids going to school. But <laughs> if you want to teach, I'll understand, you know, whatever, there'll still be breaks, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> stuff. So it's just like, okay, you know, so I got to not be selfish and think of like, this is what I want my life and my experience to be. It's like, oh, well, this is a partnership. This is a marriage. What do you want to? And now it's just like, wow, I'm actually sorry that like, uh, we waited that long because now like, she's feeling more fulfilled. Uh, she's mm-hmm. been on, you know, she's had the discipline to do that and be on keto. She's down like 50 pounds. She's getting in like, she's oh. she, for the first time. I actually weigh more than her. She probably will hate me saying that on a podcast. You know, <laughs> I actually weigh more than her now for the first time ever because I've put on 30 pounds of muscle mass uh, and, a, and a little bit of chub too. Thanks. Thanks. Jack, yeah. <laughs> thanks Jack and Coke yeah. right there. You know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> So set up in the office, great place. Yeah, right? yeah. those are the empty. It's a great. <laughs> so oh yeah, use those are the trophies. Yeah, right. when we do a late one, we'll we'll have a little whiskey out here sometimes. Well, yeah, I mean it's it's not alcoholic, non alcoholic <laughs> whiskey. Yeah, mine de- mine definitely is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but so so when we were so and I wanted to touch on this, I wanted to make sure you go. So when you were saying like I burnt the bridges, I did all that. At what point had you would had you already? Cause like one of the big pieces that I'm hearing from the story here is like, I ended up finding a mentor or at that point that kind of like went from the network marketing to the internet marketing part, right. With JBot. So at that point, did you meet JBot already? Or was that like, once you burnt the bridges, then you I had already, I'd already burnt the bridges and then he came along. Uh, it, it kind of landed in my lap because ultimately when I was a year out of college, when I was a year out of college and I hadn't gone into engineering, I was sitting on a degree and now what I'm going to come out and then have to compete at interviews for kids just coming out of college. I can, I, I love to be in that interview where I'm like, Hey, yeah, I can't wait to work. You know, well, what did you do for the last year? Uh, I was working at radio shack trying to build a business and it failed. <laughs> so I guess I'll settle for working for you. Hmm. Maybe we'll just yeah. hire the other guy that's straight out of college that didn't fuck up the last year. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. by the time I was a year out of college, I was like, that bridge is burnt. I might as well take my diploma, set it on fire, you know? And for the first like two or three jobs out of college, they're like, wait, you're, you're getting this job, but you have an engineering degree. You're way overqualified, but you're probably really smart. You can probably really kill it at this job. You are totally hired. And then when it was like the fourth or fifth job out of college, where my resume looked like Swiss cheese. You know what I mean? I had so many, <laughs> and they're just like, engineering degree must be smart, but you must be lazy or distracted. Maybe he's building a business on the side and he's not hes not really focused on all these uh, other jobs that he's had in the last three years. Five full-time jobs in three years, bro? Really? Like, seriously, like whatever? Yeah. So by the time, I, again, I was a year out of college, bridges burnt, that was it. And then it was just like, I'm so hungry physically and metaphorically. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I need to be able to have money to, for food and rent. Uh, but at the same time, like yeah. I was still hungry for success. I was still buying programs. And even when I um, purchased coaching for like $1,500, that was more than I was pulling in on a monthly basis, like after taxes. That was like a whole month salary mm-hmm. for me to spend $1,500 on coaching from uh, Jonathan at the time. Um, but wow, guess what happened? I made five grand in like three or four months. And even though I was laid off from my job, I basically went and I had applied uh, you know, all of that into my business and made a, you know, a full-time income made ends meet that year somehow. And then the, the year after that, you know, I was making 20 grand a month living in the same place I was living at before in New York where the rent was like, I think five fifty a month. We were renting from my wife's grandmother in a house that was built in 1893 uh, with like plaster oh. walls that were like kind of cracking and, you know, and stuff. And uh, I was in uh, our back porch was enclosed, but it wasn't properly insulated. So I've got my laptop in the office that I had kind of managed to make back there. And this, 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 the same desk, actually, I think I was at when I was, when I grew up, same de- desk that I had from like six years old, got my laptop on there, 
the dead of winter in upstate New York and I'm in an uninsulated office and I've literally got gloves on with like the fingers tips cut off. Like, uh, like, yeah. like, this, like, what is this? Like uh, Scrooge, you know, whatever, you know? And I'm like, and I'm trying to type <laughs> on my, on my keyboard because I'm doing SEO. I didn't have money for ads. So I'm, I'm trying to rank blog posts and make YouTube videos and do all this stuff. So I can like, I'm like going, <sighs> I'm trying to feel my fingers so I can continue typing. So like, it's so interesting. Like I've, I've, I've been in and out of the coaching space and I've worked with a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs. And when I see somebody that is like, they're, they're a Marine you know, background and uh, they're tough as freaking nails. And all of a sudden they get online and they're just like, I, I, I did three ads and they like, none of them converted. And I'm just like, you whiny right. fucking bitch, man. You were taking bullets in Afghanistan <laughs> six months ago and you're going to get a <laughs> Facebook ad. You know, I'm like, I couldn't feel my fingertips when I was working on my business. Do you have heat in your house? Like, fuck, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I had to learn a lot about patience over the last decade, of, you know, <laughs> yeah. empathy over the last 10 years of business, yeah. <laughs> which is why I've been in and out of doing coaching and consulting. I love it now because I can I can come from much more of a place of empathy and love and understanding yeah. and patience, you know, because yeah. I can just smile no matter what situation they're in and realize, like, this is, you know, like, I can kind of see, like, the look on both of your guys' face when I talk about some of this where it's just, like, I remember when I got started and I had to do do this kind of bullshit too. Maybe not to that degree, but everybody's got like their own little backstory where it's just yeah. like, Oh, that's that little struggle. That's the thing where you were tested that you could have overcome that and then found massive success. So you could have been like, ah, it's not worth it. And, and for me, Mm-hmm. I knew a lot more about what I didn't want than what I wanted. Like for me, again, I didn't come from money. I didn't know what the hell, like, oh, a mansion, a nice car. I didn't give a crap. And I, even now, like I had to force myself to buy a used Lexus to be like, get out of my comfort zone. I could give a shit about cars. It's just right. not my va- high value, right? It's not, it's not, not what yeah. I value. Yep. So like I knew what I didn't want though. And I didn't want to like grow up, you know, or, uh, or work at a job for 30 years where all I did was like have a pictures on my desk of my kids and just replace the, the year picture that they get at school every year, you know, that the, the school pictures mm-hmm. and be like, Oh, there's the next picture. There's the next picture. I, I don't spend any time with them, but I'm going to update this picture. You know, all of a sudden they're 18 and going off to college. I, mm-hmm. I never knew who they were. No, I never got a chance to spend time with them. And it's just like, I remember the right. first real vacation I took when I was making money back in New York nobody in my family could afford to like take a flight cross country and go somewhere. Took my whole family to San Diego, did the zoo, did sea world, went to the beach at Coronado, like did all this stuff. And it was just like, wow, man, like now I'm on fire. Like I, like I was so fired up from that trip. You know, I went back and I was even more excited to work on my business because I knew by then what I wanted because I had gotten around people like Jang, like Aaron, that were like, man, these guys are in life where I want to be. They're they're taking these trips. They're living the lifestyle I want to live. Uh, how do I paint that picture of life for myself and what it's going to be like? And that is so important. So many people are like, well, what's the strategies? What's the tactics? If you're not envisioning um, what life is going to be like a year, three years, five years down the, the line, and also envision the person that you're going to become to live that lifestyle one, three, five years down the line, it's mm-hmm. like, I can teach you about Facebook ads so I'm blue in the face. You know, teach about funnels all all day long, you know, so. Dude, I get I get like goosebumps when you say that, because like the reason why we named the podcast like mind over marketing, not that you don't need marketing and not that you don't like, but mindset and like being able to do that and envision and pull from the future. uh, That's ultimately what you're creating. And, And like you said, you can teach someone Facebook ads, sales funnels, all this shit to their blue in the face. And if they're not doing that type of work. Right. You're going to have you're going to have if you're not painting that vision and you don't know ultimately like what you're and sometimes I get it when you're first starting and you don't really, you know, know what you want. You more so know what you don't mm-hmm. want, kind of like what you're mm-hmm. you're touching on there. But as you start getting that, the clearer you can get on what you want, your vision starts to go bigger and bigger and bigger. So now all of a sudden problems with Facebook ads doesn't seem that big when your vision is way up here, yeah. but when your vision's way the fuck down here, problems on Facebook ads look like the craziest yeah. fucking thing in the world. You know, like yeah. fuck funnels at this point. Yeah. Why am I doing this much pain for this much pleasure? Yeah, your, your it makes no sense. Gets, you know, your ad gets disapproved yeah. and you have like a panic attack. It's like, no, like, just like you can overcome this. It's yeah. like, it's like, you didn't lose a limb here. You know what I mean? Like you didn't have you know, some crazy diagnosis. Yeah. The ad got disapproved. Rewrite the ad. You know, you got an account banned, whatever, do another, yeah. get another account. You know what I mean? And so many people want to focus on the negative side of things or what the challenges and the struggles are. And it's just like, 
Well, realize that when you, once you have the mindset developed where you know you're going to overcome those struggles, you're going to overcome those challenges, when you beat all that and then you overcome and, and attain that, you know, achieve that success level that you have on, on a pedestal, like at the top of the mountain right now, once you climb that mountain, it's just like, well, that wasn't such a big deal. You know, cause you realize, and, and I, yeah. the, the metaphor that yeah. I kind of use with this, like, is the, uh, the emotions that we're going through when we're like three or four years old, like we're at daycare, pre-K or whatever it is. And we're like building blocks and some other kid comes over and like kicks it over. Like every kid's reaction is going to be <laughs> just like, they just want to just try. <laughs> and it's just like, it's the end of the world. Cause they spent so much time building the freaking block tower. You know, that was 10% of my Absolutely. life. Cause I'm only three. It took me forever to build that. You know what I mean? It's just like, Oh my God you know, a big deal. <laughs> but like, if somebody did that to, to me, well, you do it to somebody now, they might punch you back or something like that. You know, like, dude, you got no bad response. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, but like seriously, like so, so many people, like, like there's so many things that'll happen to you in business where it's just like, once you take things to an emotional level where it's just like, you know what? I already got through this, this, and this. Maybe this is just the next step that's going to allow it to be like, this is the next uh, thing that's going to be a doorway to the next evolution of me and my business. Mm -hmm. um, a, a story that I talk about is I mm -hmm. had a coaching student where they did like a, it's like $300 a month, I think. And they did a, you know, a couple months of coaching. They came to the first one, showed up unprepared, didn't, you know, I gave them some homework. The second session, they didn't even, uh, I don't think they did the homework. I don't even know if they they st uh, they showed up for the second session uh, or whatever it was. Ultimately, um, they got they charged me back for like six hundred bucks, and this is when I was still just kind of making it in my business, and that was like it's like a month rent for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> whatever back then. So yeah. you know, I was literally having panics. I was sweat, cold sweats, waking up in the middle of the night over a measly six hundred bucks because at the time it was a mountain, right? Instead of an anthill. You know, yeah. in, in retrospect, yeah. it feels more like an anthill, right? So, um, but I, then I thought to myself, like, is like Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, now or like in the back then it was like, is Richard Branson really checking his bank account? And then if he gets a $600 chargeback or refund, is he going to be like, <laughs> you know, like the kid that whose bucks got knocked yeah. over? Like how I yeah. was behaving because that was a huge new experience in my business. And instead of like, okay, what's the learning experience from this? How can I grow from this? This isn't something that happened to me. This is something that happened around me. And then how I actually um, respond yeah. to this this event happening around me is going to determine how I take on things in the future. Awesome. Yeah, I, I want to kind of I wanted to dig in when you when you first got started on this. Like you mentioned, your first coaching you paid for it was fifteen hundred bucks from JBud, right? And yeah. that was like more than your month's salary, right? Do you like, what's your opinion on that when, when you're going in on something? Cause you were, you were all in on that. Like yeah. that was, that was a lot of skin in the game. Do you think like, what's your opinion on if, if you got into that training or you had access to that training and it was free or it was minimal costs, do you think it would have still had no, the same because even, even up until that right point now? I had already paid, you know, he had a, a, he had a funnel. So he had a $7 audio. I think his course was like 150, 200 bucks, something like that. So I'd already bought all of that. So I was in. And if I had, if I hadn't gone and purchased any of that stuff, most people think like, well, all this stuff's free online. You can just find this stuff online. It's free. Like just go to YouTube. You can just search this stuff. And it's just like, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah. but you're like having step-by-step -step a course that walks you through A to Z, soup to nuts, yeah. you know, as some people will say. And then having a mentor to actually answer your questions, you know, interaction, communication, because there's one thing where like you think by watching six different people explain the same thing on YouTube that you're now the expert on this particular subject and you start walking that path. And all of a sudden you realize that you've been walking this path. You were only one degree off, but because you've been walking that path for the last two or three months, it was actually one degree this way. But now since it's been so long, you're you've deviated this far from your freaking goal because you didn't have. Yeah you know, you, you were walking this ghost. And even if you were there, Jen would be like, no, that's actually wrong because X, Y, and Z. Oh, cool. I'm back on this path. You know what I mean? And just, and just having, absolutely. Yeah. And, it's, I, and it could be, it could be that. personal mentorship. It could be a Facebook community. It could be, I mean, a, a number of things. I mean, I go to live events. Like if I don't go to a live event for three months, I I'm itching, you know, I'm just like, I need another fix, man, you know, or, or something like Same. that because, uh, you yeah. know, 
learning the stuff online, important. Getting mentorship, important. Live events to me, uh, especially being in the industry as long as I have, I'm like, I still buy courses. I still go through stuff. I hire people to go through the stuff for me so they can apply it and I can focus on higher level stuff mm -hmm. or whatever too, <laughs> um, which is a whole nother, that's a whole nother freaking mindset right there. Um, but, you know, at the same time, like live events yeah. for me, like we, we all met at a live event. Most of the life changing relationships I've, yep, I, yep. I've had is from actually going, shaking somebody's hand at an event, even being a, an extreme introvert. Hello, nerd. I'd rather sit behind the computer all damn day and play video games. <laughs> leave me alone. That's like, you want to communicate with me? A video gamer. Put yeah. on the headset and hop in this game and we'll communicate. You know what I mean? Like that was my communication yeah, the level, chat there. You know, yeah. getting into business. Um, but now again, like the relationships that I've made with, with people, um, God, 99% events easily so i mean that's the biggest recommendation is you know yes absolutely awesome. buy the products yes get mentorship 100 percent make it to events because it's one thing to read it and watch it you know on a, on a screen it's a whole nother thing to actually be in an environment and surround yourself with the, that vibe those frequencies that you know that are the, that uh, the positive emissions people are giving off basically you know uh just love excitement yeah. you know uh inspiration all, all those emotions it's very difficult to, to communicate that we're trying to do our best here on a podcast, obviously. Right. But at the same time, man, it's just like live events. Like I can't, you know, give more praise to live events than that. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. I actually have a, a live event coming up here right away too. And it was, and it's perfect that you say that because when I did my first one, this is like the second annual that I'm setting up. And when I did my first one, it was great. And, you know, I was, it was a big part of it was I was setting a lot of it up. So it was a lot of time investment for me. And I'm not really a very organized person when it comes to that kind of <laughs> stuff. I'm like a last minute kind of cram kind of dude and did the event. And from there, I had a lot of people like just, it was their first event and being able to feel like what you're saying, the vibe and just being in person. Mm -hmm. And the, I like positive emissions. Right. And coming up to the second year, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I don't think I'm going to do it because it was just like it was so much time investment and a lot of stress on my side and I just don't see it. And then I had people that went to the first event. They're like, fuck that. Give right. me your visa card. I'll set it all up for you. Like I'll plan it. You know, you just cover the cost. I'll plan it. I'll get it set up because because of that event was the biggest shift with my business. Before I showed up to that event, I wasn't invested mentally. I wasn't invested in my business. I, I didn't feel like I, I had the, the capabilities to succeed. And then just coming to the event, it wasn't even necessarily the content that I learned at the event. It was literally yep. the people and the vibe and the connections and everything else on seeing everybody. You see the people, you see Jang, you see all these other people that are killing it in the space. Yeah. And you go, oh, wow, you know, he is pretty fucking yeah. tall, but he's still actually a human being. And if I <laughs> punch him in the nose, he'll probably bleed too. <laughs> right. And, and then it comes to that place. And those, for them, they, they were able to open up and, and, uh, see that uh see that bigger picture so it's awesome that you say that with events because <laughs> that's a big thing I, I talk we all the time i mean yeah. for me if i look at it like we met at an event at all of my 99 like you're saying my, my relationship have all been from an event now i think it's great like i didn't start going to an event i actually tried numerous different things and kind of like got into it and i bought courses and i bought products and i bought all these different shit um but then the biggest shift was like the, the first big shift was mentor, getting a mentor. That completely rocked me because I was running around with my fucking head cut off, uh, as I'm sure oh, yeah. you might have been in the, in the other spaces. And then all of a sudden you get a mentor that has the, hey, don't worry. Like, I see you fucking running in the bush trying to make this path. I got this beautiful path over here that and you here's can just a walk map. on. Yeah. It's quite a bit easier to with go. And I'm like, oh, directions fuck. And, and you yeah. along the way. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and if you press this button and ask for help, then somebody will actually, you know, talk yeah. to you a little bit if you need some guidance. Yeah, dude. And so that was next level. And then, like, getting a part of, like, a Facebook community and, like, live calls and, like, different things like that. But then the – the so that was my first big shift. And then getting a community was a big shift. Mm. But just like you, my biggest shift was my very first event. Um, and I don't even know if we were in the same company at the time. I don't know if you were in there. But with Ian, I went to the Denver event. Uh, uh, I don't know if Austin. you were with Ian at I, all. I went to one um, event in Austin. Adam. Gotcha. So I so the next one then. So you were at the one before me. The next event was was Denver, and that was my very first event. And I like so similar to you with the with the uh, with you know 
spending your month's rent on on your on or your month like a month's pay on your yeah. uh, mentorship. I literally it was like I'm making four hundred dollars mm-hmm. a week, right? I'm making sixteen hundred a month. Uh, the ticket was Canadian, fi- so that's right. like you know like Can- three hundred dollars US. <laughs> yeah, or three dollars US. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so and so I'm like shit I gotta pay I gotta pay 500 bucks for this ticket I gotta pay a thousand dollars to stay at this place for the week uh, I, I, I'm paying uh, 700 and something dollars for this flight like way more than my month thing and I'm like I'm not making any money at this point I've I'm not generated any sales uh, Dakota one of my good buddies he's just like dude you gotta get here and I didn't understand because I hadn't been to an event at that point so I, I, I didn't mm-hmm. understand the meaning of, of why uh, I just literally based on the recommendation from a mentor that I had, uh, both Cameron and, and Dakota, both saying to get there, it was literally like I had to trust, okay, these people have the results that I'm looking to achieve. I'm broke as fuck. <laughs> what I know clearly doesn't work. <laughs> so if they tell me get to a fucking event, I got to do whatever the fuck I needed to do. So like I was selling shit because uh-huh. I couldn't take my whole month's pay and put it on um, put it on going there. So like I had to sell shit. I had to take extra shifts. I was like getting rid of like my, my PlayStation and all my games and like my scooter. I was selling everything, dude. And I was like just going in because uh, I, I had just already sold most of my stuff just to even get into that business. Now I was already strapped. So like I literally sold everything to the point where I like I had a chair, a coffee table, uh, a TV stand with no TV. And that that was that was basically my my fucking living room. Like there was nothing in there, dude, because it was like everything was gone. And uh, I get to that first event. I meet Eric Carlson. I meet Julian. I meet Cameron. I meet Dakota. I I, I meet Jr. All these guys. Yeah. And the big thing was the vibe, the feeling, mm-hmm. the energy. Yeah. And I'm like, these are my fucking people because like. You know, you start getting into, especially like I'm starting to get into personal development a bit. I'm starting to get, you know, uh, I'm motivated. I'm starting to get more inspired. And and at home, all I'm hearing is that's just yes. fucking stupid. That's like, why are you guys, exactly why are you doing all that? Go. Like, this isn't going to work. My copywriter, you know? Jason, like he went to the first event you know, back in probably 2014. And he's talking to somebody about his dreams. And they're like, oh, man, that, that sounds awesome. Tell me more about that. And he's like, what did you just say? He's just like, you didn't. You didn't just say like, dude, that's stupid. You shouldn't do that. That's gonna fail. Like, you're like, why would you want to do that? Why don't you just stay at your job? Like, you you actually want to hear about my dream and, and encourage me? Like, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, like I gotta what? wait. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's completely like, it's like like you said. These are my people. And I, I one of the I want to say one of the first online events, but it was probably a couple years in. I went to an event. And a guy named uh, Jay Kubasek gets up on stage and he's like, I was supposed to talk about this, but I'm gonna talk about something else. And he basically talked about like, you get the feeling like you're kind of not like a lot of the other people that are out there. You kind of feel like a misfit. And you, I just remember him saying that word misfit. And I'm just like, mm. yeah, yeah, it kind of feels like that. Where it's just like, I don't mean to, it's not meant in a, in a like destructive kind of a way, but it's literally like uh, the outcast. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's just like, you know, we're questioning yeah. all of society. And the tough thing is like, if you're, if you're listening to this right now and you've had, you know, parents say, well, nobody can make money online or like nobody that age can make that kind of money and all these things based upon their previous programming, like understand that that's, that's their programming, but also realize that imagine if they had just worked the last 30 years at some corporate job or uh, several corporate jobs. And all of a sudden you think they're going to admit that there was an easier way. No, they're going to be like, Oh yeah. Like I'm, that, yeah, I, right. I could totally have done that. You know, you, you should go and do that and make millions of dollars. Uh, but, I, but I'm, I feel justified because I'm just going to keep doing the thing that I really hate to do over here. And you know, I'm totally, you know, like, like that's, not <laughs> that but, 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 to, but even on that, on that though, like, you know what, exactly. 30 years ago, they didn't have that opportunity. You know what? 30 years ago, 30 years ago, right? And so I get this, and, and this is the thing, though, because you're exactly right. Because 30 years ago, that's what worked. What worked was go to school, get the job. You actually, it was way cheaper to go to school. When the time you got out of school, <laughs> there was actually jobs available. Like, that system worked. For, like, our grandparents' yeah. grandparents, that was the model. Like, that worked, right? We're now getting to a space now where school's costing fucking 10 times more than it's ever costed there's 10 times less jobs than ever existed possible and we have access to the internet which gives so much fucking opportunity that the highest grossing fucking youtube channel is a fucking kid that opens toys like there's so much fucking opportunity now it's not the same reality that our parents used to live in it's not the same reality that our grandparents used to live in and so we need to be open to the fact that there is more opportunity and and just like you said i did feel like a misfit because like i i i was so 
I wanted more. I wanted to think more. Like I wanted to travel. I wanted to do these things. I was sick of being broke. And like whenever I would talk about my dreams or like things I wanted to do, <laughs> everyone looked at me like a fucking crazy person. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I don't like, and, you know, and be like, oh man, you know, that's not going to work. They would, it would always bring me down. It's like, no, like I, lo- I was watching this on Gary Vee and he's like, one of the people I fucking hate the most is like when you're trying to do shit and you're competing and they're telling you to chill out and calm down. <laughs> like fuck me for you, fuck face. Like, <laughs> like, you calm like, down. like, like, no, like this is what inspires me. I want to be lit up. So I go to that first event yeah. and it's all people like that i was blown the fuck yeah. away i'm like where the fuck have these people been my whole life i'm like this is my family like these are the guys that i, I and everyone's creating different shit they're doing different businesses they're running different things they're doing different platforms you know there's all these ideas bouncing so much creative going i'm like whoa yeah. like mm-hmm. that was what lit me the fuck up was the energy of being in that environment of creators was something that like blew me away. And, and, and we were even on a podcast talking about this on one of our previous episodes yeah. where no matter what you want to do, cause maybe it's not like you don't want to be, maybe you don't want to run a business. I, I firmly believe that the true, the, 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 the only way to create true freedom is through entrepreneurship in one way, shape or form. Otherwise you're trading time for money, but sometimes like your wife loves teaching. And so that's a, a fulfillment piece. Like that's what she loves to do. And if that's your case, that's what you do. Right. But if, if you want to be, if you want to be a, uh, 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 an artist, if you want to be a yoga teacher, if you want to <laughs> knit fucking, if you want to knit fucking sweaters, you know what I mean? Find communities that are running events that are doing whatever it is that you love to do, whatever that might be and surround yourself by those people. It's the fastest way to start shifting away from the way that you were currently living and the thing, the way that you're thinking, like the quickest way to get that type of shift is by surrounding yourself and submerging yourself in that type of environment where you can get around people like that. And I mean, yeah, like you were saying, like we met there, you met there, me and Josh met at an event, like every single, like all my closest friends now, I met at events Mm -hmm. and they're all creators in some way, shape or form. They're doing something, When you, you know, and it's, it's really, really cool to see. And, uh, so when you talk about that energy, like I had, uh, one of the, I don't say, I don't say mentors, but I I, I can, I can say he was a mentor. I I can give him that much. He was just like, he was probably three years younger than me is he's like 19 at the time or something like that but a guy that was just trying to make waves in his network marketing mm-hmm. business and uh people would always tell him like man like you're working so much you're gonna burn out and he's and he i remember him saying man i'd rather burn out than rust out and i was just like mic drop <laughs> because so many <laughs> people like they are like no and you gotta chill like you said like you gotta chill man don't do so much man you're gonna like burn yourself out like you're working too much and it's just like this doesn't, this doesn't work right now. Like we're just having fun, you know what I mean? And, and, and we're, we're generating energy from energy. You know what I mean? Where instead of like, this is what's lighting us on fire. Instead of like, yep. I saw, especially like when I was working a couple of my little like side jobs, while I was trying to make my business work. I'm like doing in-home sales. So I'm going to people's homes selling, uh, like, uh, like different home additions and stuff like that. One of the things that we'd sell was like those walk-in tubs for like older people. So I'm here walking into this older person's house who like they spend 90% of their day in front of the TV, clicking the remote, just rusting out, not feeling fulfilled. Like, you know, what what are you waiting for? Just, I'm just waiting to die or price is right. Whatever happens fucking first. Like, like seriously like, <laughs> like murder she wrote or die like literally like it, like it, and it fr- friggin like burns my heart so much because talking to just dozens of people that like they're done you know their energy level is low and then i go to an event and i meet i meet like a 72 year old who's like learning about online marketing and he's like yeah man always be learning keeps you young i'm like what did you just like you're 72 yeah or whatever He's like, yeah, retirement, that's just a state of mind, man. And he's like, I don't want to retire. I just want to like move into a new chapter of my life. And like the way he was phrasing stuff, completely different than the let's rust out. Yeah. You know, it was like, you know, he wasn't worried about burning that. It wasn't even really much an energy thing. Yeah. It was something that was like, this was like the fountain of youth to him. And it was like, I want to say literally because that event was in Playa del Carmen yeah. and we went to the beach one day and that dude was like chilling. That dude was that dude was yeah. chilling. He was uh, he was doing jet skis on the beach too. I mean, like seventy two years old. Like, yeah, you know, whatever. I'm like, man, like, I want to be that, like, have that much vitality when I'm seventy two. You know, <laughs> and it's, again, like, know, knowing stuff, not like don't get on a side. Yeah. Too much of a side. Yeah, that purpose here, but, drive, like, right? Knowing purpose like driven. what we don't want or versus what we do want. I knew that uh, like pretty much everybody on my dad's side of the family and a few on my mom's side of the family all died of heart attacks. So I'm like, 
am I going to work for somebody else getting all stressed out? Or am I going to be in my now mid to late thirties and still look like I'm in my twenties, you know, and be in the best shape of my life. And you know what? If I want to sleep a little longer, I'll sleep a little longer. If I want to, I'm a, I'm a night owl. If I want to stay up, I'm going to stay up. You know what I mean? And just, and just having that kind of freedom, you know, like there's, there's nothing, there's nothing yep. that compares with that. No, agreed. Oh. Funny you say Playa del Carmen. We're actually just gearing up the head there now. Yeah, I gotta book it's my gorgeous. flight. I'm That's to funny. Book right after this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's gonna be fun, man. So when one of the one because what's funny to see is and it pretty much happens with everyone we talk about. With everyone we talk with mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to like because marketing obviously was the thing that allowed you to create the lifestyle that you have and, and the businesses that you have and everything there uh, but you touched on a lot about like the personal development that you've done uh, how big of a factor even before you got to like where you are now do you think that played the part in like having the right mindset having the ability to like see the vision um, of the future definitely and all personal that before development. You even got into I, mean, that? I started listening to some Jim Rohn stuff one of the, the first high ticket business opportunities I joined was uh, a personal development company even before that with network marketing um like part of it was like got to read books got to listen to audios because they understood um you know it's it's about the subconscious mind you know whatever the mind can conceive and believe it will achieve and uh and just like having to work on yourself so absolutely personal development is a mm -hmm. yep. is a huge part of that um and as far as man when um it was probably around the time i started in network marketing uh luckily because of uh, of that but my biggest like mindset shift was instead of getting emotional about a lot of things um i learned at a young age probably 21 22 years old how to be objective and not take things kind of personally um and the first major thing that um i had to realize in terms i'm going real deep and this is like real personal so all those all of you watching here like bear with me here i'm going we're gonna go deep right. this is important shit this can change your life. This can change your relationships. It was the fact that um, my parents got divorced when I was five or six. And then I saw my dad get remarried and divorced again. And uh, my wife's parents, um, her original uh, parents, uh, they split up at a young age. And that was a whole whole mess. She did. The mom got remarried. Her, my wife's uh, stepdad, amazing person. Um, they, they're still married. I think they just celebrated the 30th wedding anniversary, something like that. They, things are great there. Um, but me growing up, I had to swallow a tough pill, which was I didn't know what a good marriage looked like. And I didn't know how to be a good husband to, a, to an extent, how to really be a father because after their divorce, I didn't really mm. see my father all that much weekends here and there. And if that, like, I was definitely not enjoying my time with him. He was not, mm. he was not really happy go lucky going through two divorces. You know what I mean? So, uh, and that's another whole situation, which you guys know the story where mm. I didn't talk to him for a few years and now, We've not, we're not only talking again uh, when I, I visited him when I went back to New York. So that, that relationship got men, mended. But again, going back to like when I was 21, 22, proposing to my now wife, high, high school sweethearts at the time, stayed together most of the uh, time through high school and college, only small little breakups when you're a teenager, that just happens. Um, but getting married, basically, I think I was 24, she was 23. Um, and already knowing for the two years prior to that, I'm going to need to, we're going to need to go to marriage seminars. We might need to get counseling. We're going to read some books together. Like we're going to, this is going to be work. We're in love. We're going to have a great time together. We have a lot of things in common. We have a lot of the same goals, yep. but how I treat you, how you treat me, how we communicate, we got some work to do. And it was, it was literally that being objective. So like my personal development started yep. in business and entrepreneurship, but it was very evident how much that that was going to encapsulate all parts of my life dude and that's what i think the biggest part is like because uh, when the biggest part of doing the personal development part isn't that it's going to help your business it, it it changes the way you view your entire life it changes mm -hmm. the relationships you have it changes every single aspect of your whole life whether you apply it to business yeah. or not yeah. you're going to live them happier more for, yeah. it, it, it goes to everything when when you were mentioning so when you were first got it recommended oh, to you to like because read books, the, listen to audios, the, the books that we were told to read to back that? in high school were like great expectations <laughs> and i was like great no <laughs> no just no just not going to happen. And uh, I remember buying the <laughs> notes to those books and 
not even making it through those things. Like I was like, I hate reading, you know? And, and, and the interesting thing was, is you go back another like five to 10 years before that, um, I was reading uh, like Hardy Boys books and like detective stories and stuff like that. I was writing short stories myself. Yeah, I had um, yeah. Uh, a teacher literally say like when uh, when he writes his first book, I hope he dedicates it to me. Like she said that at like our eighth grade graduation or whatever it was before I'd gotten into high school and then was forced to read Charles Dickens, which, you know, even if it was like Clockwork Orange and you made my eyes open, you know, and put that shit in front of me. Oh, I don't want to read Charles Dickens. I'm sorry. Like, sure, it was great back in the day. Not relevant to anything that I wanted to do because it was it was very forced. So I had that negative association from ninth grade on that right. reading sucks, that it's boring, that I don't want to do it. And um, luckily yep. today with technology, we have audiobooks and podcasts and stuff that is a lot more accessible before where you yeah. might see a lot of books on the shelf back there, back on there. I can guarantee you that most of them weren't read from cover to cover. A lot of them were like, I'm going to skim through, read pertinent points, and then I'm done with it. And I'm, I just need to extract what I need to at that particular moment. But I'm not going to sit down here hardcore. The only times that I even nowadays still do that is when I'm on a flight and there's no TV. You know, there's no freaking screen. Like, all right, I'll read. Good thing I brought this book. And I read something. He's, and again, it's something that I know can have an impact in my life, my business and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I mean, reading wise, oh no. Uh, my big thing, uh, my first like real year in uh, online entrepreneurship, I still had all of the CDs they, they made us buy back in my original network marketing company that I'll still remain unnamed. Um, so I got like yeah. binders full of CDs. So man, I was like throwing yeah. those things in. I didn't care if I was in the yeah. business or not. It was good motivational stuff. You know, regardless of what they're what they were being successful in, it was the mindset, and I knew that yeah. I, you know, to to program my mind and walking out of somebody's house and not selling yeah. them a, a basement finishing room, you know, finished basement room or a uh, a walk-in tub or whatever the heck I was trying to sell them at the time. It's like well, it's getting lots of rejection. It's like you get, you need some positive reinforcement. So I dove right into those CDs, so like Jim Rohn stuff, Tony Robbins, or that yeah. network marketing company CDs. You know, whatever it was, yeah. I didn't care. I was gonna friggin' just absorb that and bombard my mind with, with success. Cause otherwise like one, one metaphor that I like to use is uh, like, yeah. if you look at, you know, your, your backyard or like anybody's yard, you know, you, you typically find grass, but there's weeds. Do people have to go and buy weed seeds or does like, do these weeds just grow and you have to like pull them out and stuff like that. You have to spray for weeds, right. Or whatever. It's like, you don't go and buy seeds for them. They just naturally grow. And in our mind, those weeds kind of like they grow up. You know, they, they, they kind of grow there and it's kind of one of those things you gotta, you gotta pluck them out from time to time. And I still, uh, I still talk about, um, I think it was a couple of days ago, I did a, a go live where I was talking about like one of our email servers or something got shut down and this could be disastrous and blah, 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 blah. And it was literally like all these doubts started to creep in. Like you're worthless. How could you, you know, how could you let this happen? What mistake did you make to make this happen? And it was just like, I'm literally having to tell my brain, dude, chill. We're going to find a solution. Let me talk to my guy and find an expert, find a mentor, right? 15 minutes, the shit was solved. That could have been three <laughs> days of me pacing yeah. and, uh, uh, you know, and getting in my yeah. head and putting a vice around my skull and being like, ah, my God, it sucks, whatever. But instead, no, nah, man, I'm just going to chill. I'll talk to my guy. I'll get it figured out, you know? It's it's funny to see that once once you get that little yeah. mindset piece down, how small all these seemingly big problems at the time end up being when you're really in that it state. And blocks, I, I think that's where because the thing is, if you get into business or entrepreneurship yeah. or anything like that, you're gonna get you're gonna get fucking punched in the face. Like you're gonna get punched in the face. You know you're gonna have to eat glass and eat shit for a while, and shit's gonna fucking happen. You know what I mean? And so if you don't have that mindset, there's no chance in fuck you're going to go through it all. You're going to have one ad not work and you're going to go fuck this. Or you're going to try one business and you open the door, don't spend money on advertising, get pissed that no one's walking in the door. You know? And like you, you got to have that part down. But very similar to you when you when you first got in, into it. And it's really hilarious actually to see that all of us found a way to outsource the book report part. Uh, you <laughs> yeah, you totally used yeah. Cliff Notes. He used his girlfriend. Yeah. And I paid some random kids just to do the book reports because I was like, fuck yeah. reading. Because like, they made you read stupid shit that I didn't fucking care about. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. So I had the association of reading stupid. It sucks. It's boring. All of this. As soon as I started getting the ship, though, of it was like personal development, mindset, business, success. And I was like, whoa, like 
I actually really enjoy learning about stuff like that. And of course, the addition of audios and 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 uh, podcasts and videos and all that stuff where you can there's so many different ways for you to absorb that content now. Um, that was something that I was really fulfilled by. And I really loved learning that. And so now all of a sudden it took that thing that I thought I hated uh, and turned it into something that I actually ended up love, loving, you mm-hmm. know, and, and I, I, I attribute most of what I do to the fact of, of, of doing most of the personal development stuff. And that actually gets a good point. And maybe we can even uh, get into there because um, we've both gone through the same trilogy of classes. Um, yeah. Being a, a awaken, activate, and accelerate uh, run by Todd Campbell. Um, maybe we can we can go into there from from those because up until that point had you done no, any like personal development type i mean i had seen that like tony robbins like speak for four or five hours and but you know he's kind of all over the place diagnosing i mean he can he's got such a library of information you know he can just pull something out of his rear and you know just talk to somebody for a few minutes and you know okay let's diagnose what you got going or whatever so it was good to see that but the the trilogy of events with inspiring and, and todd todd campbell's company is it's a curriculum and everything builds upon, you know, the previous thing, you know what I mean? So, and it's not just like the three events. It's like even the first event, three days, each day, one builds upon the other. So I'd never, ever been through anything uh, remotely close to that. I've been to a million events that we, yeah. we talked about mindset and things like that, as well as marketing or whatever else, but n- nothing remotely close to that ever. Yeah, that's awesome. I love hearing that too, because for me personally, like you guys have, you guys have been in the space way longer than i have right and you've been working on yourselves going to these types of events luckily Um, you came into the industry experience like luckily you came into the industry perfect aaron you didn't need any events the trilogy of events that's really (laughs) yeah you don't need to change (laughs) yeah yeah so it's it's yeah well it's Mm -hmm. cool to hear because now because for me i don't have that contrast right so i don't have the contrast to be like yeah you know it it, it, people go is it was it a great event well yeah it was great for me but like in comparison, I have nothing really to compare it to. So fuck, I don't know. I, yeah, I think it was pretty good. But I mean, I'll always stand behind it because of what I've experienced. And then the best part is, is when I get to hear it from you guys that have the experience of been to all these different types of uh, personal development style events um, and finding out that this is so much more hands on and so much more impactful. Um, and yeah. The, and the, the, the tough thing is like really cool somebody was trying to ask me like, so you don't want to give away. It's kind of like watching like an M. Night Shyamalan, whatever movie. And you're like, you can't give away the ending, you know? So people are like trying to ask you, well, what's, what happens at the events? What did you do? And it's just like, well, you kind of got to go to experience it. And they're just like, oh, cult, you know, or something like that. They got to like, you know, second guess it, you know, or whatever. They're just like jump to conclusion. It's just like, no, it's like, it's yeah. a curriculum. <laughs> and if I tell you what's on day three, it's going to freaking ruin it for you. And the, the toughest thing for people is like, I was trying to describe it and I was basically mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, it's like, uh, it's like a living autopsy where you're like, you're kind of opening yourself up and uh, it's going to hurt a little bit. And, uh, and I'm just like, <laughs> that's the worst way I could possibly describe these events. You know what I mean? Like, shit. You know? So, so like, yeah. like just kind of going into some gonna, deep dive of like, what gonna your feel past, good. how your past <laughs> has affected you and then awakening you, the awaken, awakening you to kind of like what, what the possibilities are of like, you know, what's the programming that we're holding on mm-hmm. to that's negative and what's actually serving us, you know, and kind of seeing, you know, the, 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 the contrast between those things. And uh, for me, Awaken was um, so uh, waking. Uh, I literally like got back and I, was, I talked to my wife. I talked to my assistant uh, and copywriter, Jason, and they were at the next one. <laughs> you know, I'm like you got you just got to go because I knew like it was going to be tough for me to communicate uh the benefits of it i was like you just gotta go and then after that the communication with my wife again like we'd known even before marriage and being together since high school like when we first got together i was wearing like the metal beaded necklaces i had like black fingernails and i listened to like really you know hardcore i still listen to metal but you know whatever i was listening to like all sorts of crazy stuff back then and uh you know wearing all black just super gothy looking you know punk kind of kid or whatever like that yeah, no way, dude. Yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll uh, I cannot this, fucking uh, picture that. Remind dude. me, I'll find a picture. <laughs> of school. Yeah, right. Yeah, awesome. Totally, people totally want. We should have used that picture for so, the yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, Since then, so like, I was changing from that in the people that are like, okay, we're gonna get married into like, now like all the all the personal growth that we've had now being together for basically over twenty years or something like that now. Eight, eight plus yeah 20 it'll be 21 years i think uh next may or something like that so it's like damn and i'm only 37 
So actually, it'll be yeah. So it'll be more than that actually. But um, so so long story short, with wow. that is like even after all of the history that we had and how many different personality changes and business changes and career changes and life changes that we had gone through going to awaken uh it was like light speeding our freaking communication skills you know ahead by that much more hmm. yeah and it's not like because it's not like anyone it's i like the way you put that it, it, it just accelerated the growth at which you can because it's not that you need any of these things it's just for me I want shit done now. Yeah. I want shit done fast. If it, if something's going to take me 10 years of experience and like all over yeah. the place versus I can like cut that down and do it in a yeah. weekend, mm -hmm. I'm doing it in the fucking weekend. Yeah, I want my cake and I want it now. Yeah, I want it now, <laughs> you know? And so it's like, it's an accelerator. And, and one of the things that I love the most about it, because I have been to like other personal development events and, and most of what you see, and, and, and for anyone listening, mm. you might have context to this. Uh, most of what you see is just someone speaking at you, mm -hmm. basically. And so you're just sitting in stands and you're just the, listening to someone speak at you. And, and you're only going to absorb maybe 5% of that content if if that and you're going to leave and yeah you know you might be pumped up and motivated from the event and being rah rah whatever but you go home and you don't have any there's no tools in your tool belt mm -hmm. whereas like what i loved about awaken activate accelerate you're going it's not like because you can sit there in the stands of a regular person on an event and they're talking about this stuff and you're like oh. yeah oh yeah yeah i know how to do that and i do this and yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh i know i know oh yeah i know that and and then you can't do that right. at Awaken. You can't do that at Activate. You can say you know all the fuck you want. We're going to put you in a real-life yeah. example. You're going to do an exercise, and you're going to see exactly how the fuck you show up. And it's going to be a mirror right in your face. And then right. it's a one. It's the one place where you can have an honest assessment of yourself because like you can say you do the things all you want. You might, it's, it's the difference of like knowing as in like, I've heard of something mm -hmm. and knowing as in like, I actually fucking know and understand. Mm -hmm. And so like now you get to see like, oh, right. I say I know all this stuff, but I actually don't apply any of it. And then you get to like learn practical tools that you can start taking and using in your everyday life. So that by the time you leave there, you've done, what is it, like 20-something different exercises yeah, that's wild. In, in so many different areas to see how you show yeah. up in all different areas of your life, right? And, and it's you can't escape. Like you can't go out of there. You can't – like we always talk about you can't stick your hand in a jar of glue without some of it sticking. This is like – this is this is like even the next level of that because there's so many it's, it's not like uh, you can't go through there go through an experience show up see the way you're showing up like that was the biggest thing for me there was numerous right. exercises there that were just a slap in the face because I said I was doing all the shit mm -hmm. I said I was already doing this but then I did the exercise and it was proved to me that I was full shit yep. I said I was doing all these things but I, clearly I'm not actually applying any of them. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, that's, that's one of the biggest things. And so for those guys listening right now, if, if that's something that you maybe want to even look into, maybe what we'll do, uh, if you go, if you're not in there already, jump in the mind over marketing, uh, Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Um, and what we'll do, we'll probably have a file in that, in, in that group there. And we'll throw in something. If you guys are looking yeah. at and, and uh, wanting to the interesting to thing about the events and it's all three uh, we'll events, because like, like you said, all three um, events has but yeah, dude. different activities and examples and things and how, how you show up to that is ten, you know, tends to be how you show up in real life. And I can, I, I was sitting here looking down at this, this weird looking pen uh, that's on my desk and like yeah. just as simple as something as a pen, like that I can use as a metaphor, like to some people it's like, they think of a, a pen and it's like, there are maybe a business to business salesperson. They sit down with, you know, big, big wig executives and they close million dollar deals with a pen. So to them, they see a pen, they see commissions, they see like the livelihood of their family because of the money that they're making in their business. At the same time, like somebody sees a pen and they're like, they're a bank teller and they like get yelled at fricking by people or whatever. You know, they're working, you know, they're working, uh, you know, it's, uh, as a server or something like that. And they associate a pen mm -hmm. with like all the shitty customers they had, you know, in a particular day or whatever, or somebody looks at a pen. And they're just like, you know what, I, I'd like to journal and uh, I'm, or I'm going to write a book, you know, and they write their first book just by hand, not even by computer with a pen. And that goes on to make them, you know, millions of dollars, change their life, change the lives of the people that read that book or whatever. And then other people are be like, yeah, I remember when my uh, my sister stabbed me with a pen when I was six years old, fucking bitch you know, whatever. I never got over that. And I, always, and now I have this, uh, <laughs> this fear of pen, yeah. this fear of, uh, this, uh, this lack of trust for people because of what my sister did to me when I was six, we're talking about a fucking pen. You know what I mean? Like a pen, like you start to relate this to stuff mm -hmm, around yeah. your life. 
Like, just like you yeah. said, when yeah. the mirror's in front yeah. of you, it's very difficult to look at that. And that's why I kind of related it, unfortunately, to the, the living autopsy is a lot of people just being, I'm going to be real, if that's cool. Like, some of you are already clicking on the Awaken link. <laughs> okay, keep doing that. But I want you to realize, like, what I was talking before about being objective and saying, like, me saying to myself, like, man, maybe I don't know about how to be a good husband or a good father. I don't know what a real marriage looks like because I didn't have that example set be objective and don't be hard on yourself. Like go to the event, but don't be hard on yourself. Like, man, I can't believe I do this. I'm such a piece of crap. And that, because that was the hardest for me after doing all three events where I was like, man, I like, this is really tough for me not get, to get into depression because I'm, I'm revealing all these character mm -hmm. traits about myself that I don't like. It's like, you also have to take the yin and the yang and say, well, thank God I have those negative character traits because if I didn't, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. You know, I wouldn't have the experience that I, that I have now. I wouldn't be the person I am today if I if those good things and mm -hmm. bad things didn't happen to me in my past. So like that's like one big thing I definitely want to like just recommend everybody that's going to attend um, Awaken or any you know any you know any of the classes. You have to attend Awaken and graduate it before you do the other ones. But basically, like when you're going into that, I just remember seeing people that like the second day they go they go home and do their home you know their homework or whatever back in the hotel and they show up the third day and Todd gets up on stage and they're looking at Todd like. I'm gonna fucking punch this guy like this son of a bitch like you know like they're they're physically upset because he asked a simple question <laughs> and they didn't like the answer <laughs> they didn't like the answer they gave themselves it wasn't anything about what necessarily what todd said to them todd isn't gonna try and uh, offend anybody but this is why he's not a speaker he's a facilitator he's gonna help facilitate your experience through the whole event you know so for me it was just like ooh, that that hurt a little bit but that's interesting let me take a mm -hmm. step back look at this objectively like and how can i change that and now it's like, not only like for me, my highest values are like mostly like business related, finance related. I want to build my like my family legacy, things like that. But I realized like if I look at how I organize my schedule and my finances, I'm like, wow, I need to allocate a lot more of this to like family and vacations and maybe experiencing this thing called joy. You know, like I, I, I went out to Vegas, you know, several months ago, uh, met with our friend Ayala, <laughs> and uh, I was like, hey, man, like, I don't know if you're busy or whatever, but I'm going to go see a Cirque du Soleil tonight. Uh, and if uh, you ain't going, uh, I'm going that shit alone because I need to go have some fun, you know, and it was just like, I'm going to spend 250, 300 bucks on a ticket. I don't give a shit. I'm going to get like, I'm going to have a good yeah. time tonight. You know what I mean? Because I need to experience joy because Dude, you know, there's gotta be a, right. There's gotta be some kind of like balance, right? He's got some mushrooms. Yeah. He's got so. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> no, there totally does, man. Totally does, and it's you gotta have. And I think that's something that, you know, I I don't know if you have. I've gone through both phases where I went from all play, no work, right? And that's how I kind of started. Yeah. Then it went all work, no play, right? And yeah. then you kind of get the balance after. You're like, you've experienced only play and you're broke as fuck and you're not making any money. Yeah. And then you've experienced all work and you're not really playing and you're not really fulfilled and experiencing joy. And then you kind of like come together and create this kind of like work life balance no, where you can kind of have really the time for yourself. Actually. I don't know if you read the book, powerful engagement. That was the one that really first got me to like start breaking up my days and, and, and start taking times like Sundays. One of the things Cameron always installed in us religiously was like Sunday, you don't have a phone, you don't have a computer, you're completely unplugged and you are you time, whether that's family time, whether it's playing video games, whether it's playing basketball, but that's your recharge day. If you were to imagine the capacity and your right. body's energy as being like your phone, your Sunday is the day you plug it into the wall. Right. And so you're plugging it back in the wall. You're filling up your battery so that Monday through Friday you can sprint and Saturday and then Sunday you go and plug it and charge again. And you make sure throughout those days as well that you're periodically giving your time. You're not just trying to work eight hours straight, 12 hours straight. You're giving your time to like break up your work schedule into chunks of like two hours where you're the most productive. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you ever looked at that chart, basically your two hours of productivity is spike. And then any hours after two, if you go on, it starts going down. And so if you can go, but with as little of a 15 to 20 minute break, you can go back to that spike and go two hours spiked and then go 15, 20 minute break, two hours spiked again. And then you could do six hours and get eight to 10 hours worth of work done. But we sit in front of a computer. I did this all the time. Yeah. And I thought I was getting more work done because I was sitting in front of the computer, but I'm nowhere near as engaged. I'm not as near as like, as if I were to take a little bit of a break and play video games. Actually, that's how we started doing it. Uh, Adam was me and Cameron up in, up in his house in Big White. We'd do two hour work chunk. We'd time it. Once that two hour timer hit, we'd seconds. play a game One and second. it was like Call of Duty or NHL or whatever. We'd play that for like 20 minutes. 
Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, good. So, uh oh. This what do we got? This is my little that's timer. I got to... <laughs> so literally, that's my video game computer right there. The room next to it's my virtual reality room. Oh, nice. So I literally will set a fucking timer and be like half an hour or forty five minutes, whatever it is. Video games <laughs> go. That shit goes off. Like might finish the level, might not, but like gotta time that shit. Like man, like like this is this is it another, another huge point. Like I had a mentor se seven figure guy in that network marketing company basically yeah. said, I know, I know what's important <laughs> to you. If I look at two things, your checkbook and your calendar, what you spend money on, what you spend time on, you know, where you invest both of those things. So mm -hmm. gotta yeah. have this because when I don't have that, yeah. I will play for three hours <laughs> and not get up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, totally. I feel you, man. I totally get to there. And so we've done a lot on, on the on the personal level side. Maybe we'll take a little bit of a spin here. I'm not sure what we're doing for time. How much how, how, what, what time you got over how much time you got over there, Adam? You good to go for a little uh, bit? I, I can do another 10, 15. Okay. So let's let's do a little bit of a spin over to the other side. Let's let's get to uh, obviously you, you uh, like maybe even getting more into like what you're doing now, like now and and even even so uh, like, cause now all of a sudden you've done all this personal development work. You've got like a really amazing mindset. You're a fucking awesome dude. And now you've taken that, applied that to your business. Uh, one, how, how, how is your business? Like what, it, what changes have you seen in your business since accelerate? And then let's go into like kind of the, some, some of the stuff that you do, man. So, uh, business wise, I'm just a lot more focused. And, uh, one of the uh, exercises that we do is, uh, we discover like what our highest values are. Like what, what we value most in this world, what, mm -hmm. you know, where we really shine. And uh, one of the th ways that you do that is you basically look at what's like the most organized. You look at the space around you. What is your space dedicated to? And it's just like, well, got a whiteboard over here. Got a whiteboard over there. Got, you know, my books behind me. I got the whole desk over here and a whole bunch of other boxes of books and stuff over in this corner. Man, I wonder if I spend a lot of time on business. And get, granted, this is my office, but it's just like I've also got a room dedicated to video games. So it's like <laughs> it's pretty easy to tell for me, like what my highest values are. So um, interestingly enough, like it's not just like the building business. It's also like the finances, building wealth and everything. And I started to put more time into real estate. Oh, cool. Would have thought like when I start putting time into like uh, learning more about real estate, going through courses, making connections locally um, of people that do wholesaling and fix and flips and other investors, things like that. All of a sudden I meet a guy at an event who's a real estate investor who wants to make a course. <laughs> wow. What emerging, you mean real estate marketing? Like those things can go together. Holy crap. So again, stars align. So like I basically just, am, uh, I built out a funnel for him. We're about to, we're going to be launching that here pretty soon. Um, it's about to be wrapped up, but I'm basically doing a partnership with him where like that can be a freaking $10 million, $20 million plus year business just in the re uh, real estate investing education uh, uh, industry. Um, and the other side of things is like the other thing that I really um, am passionate about is fitness. I go to the gym five days a week now. I used to be 133 pound, 135 pound weakling. Got picked on a lot when I was in high school for the size that I was. And uh, luckily, um, I could still stand up for myself no matter my weight. Thank you, uh, I Irish black outrage, I call it. Yes, Irish. <laughs> you know, that's that I literally coined that phrase because I got picked on in, in, in high school. Beat the living crap out of that poor kid. Uh, and, you know, so <laughs> never bothered me again, though. So, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so long story short, uh, it's like, so what, what the hell was I going with this? I'm like, I'm like, like losing, losing my train of thought here because we're going so long. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. I, I'm just so, more. Let, let, so, let, sorry. You no, got go it? Ahead. Okay. Yeah. Cause we're, we're basically, um, basically going into where I'm just trying to think of if you got, we got, we got 10 minutes here and for everyone listening here, like wh what are the typical like ideal clients that you end up working with? So yeah, for yeah, those yeah. that are, for those that are listening, right? Yeah, so I was talking about fitness. That's where we were at. So yeah. like when I was talking about like how I, I've been going to the gym <laughs> for five days a week and I started talking about like me being a weakling all of a sudden back in high school, and I like flash back to that. See, isn't that interesting? Like recognize that anchor. Where's that anchor tied into whatever. So, um, so fitness is really important to me. I also get massages probably twice a month, give or take once or twice a month minimum. Um, and, uh, got one this morning as a surprise, which was kind of odd. They were at the gym that I go to like, Oh, free massage. Awesome. I won't, won't have to get one tomorrow. Cool. It's just saving 60 bucks. Sweet. You know, whatever. Um, so that and like, 
wellness, spas, uh, chiropractor, that kind of stuff. Like I'm really into that. So I had a, um, uh, a colleague, a student of mine and a, uh, a eventual client of mine that I helped with some ads back in 2014. Uh, long story short, she spent about 600 bucks, generated about 300, uh, I'm sorry, $3,000 from that $6,000 in, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, $600 in ad spend generated $3,000 in initial clients for her spa. Um, she upsold all those people packages and made about $70,000. We had to shut wow. off the ads because she was, she got so busy and everything. So <laughs> she's going to do Great some problem. really successful things. We kind of reconnected months ago and I said, you know what? Like, you know, you've got some outsourcers and stuff working for you. I've got the experience of, uh, running an agency. How about we like really build this agency in the wellness space? So we co-authored a book. We basically all outlined it and gave our stories to a ghostwriter and they put, you know, the ghostwriter put the, put together the book. So we've got a book written. We've got a little mini funnel created to take on clients and, like that's basically, we're literally waiting on Wells Fargo to get their head out of their ass to get the bank. We're in different states. So they have to figure right. out like how to get us both on the bank account. It's ridiculous. Like this is why everybody's going blockchain and cryptocurrency because banks are <laughs> dumb. It's like, it's 2018 yeah. and you have me fi like filling out a manual form. Like, give me a break, man. So, so we're building a, a wellness uh, digital marketing agency called Wellness Markers. Cool. So again, I'm passionate about fitness. I'm passionate about like getting massages and feeling relaxed and, you know, and, and having that kind of a feeling, how would I market to those types of businesses? So again, that's a high, high value to me. If you're listening to this and you're like, man, I like the gym too. Maybe I'll help gyms go and get more clients or help, you know, personal trainers, or maybe you're a personal trainer listening to this and you're like, man, maybe if I could learn marketing, I can get more, more clients that way. You know, it's like when you know you can build anything through marketing, it's like you can, you can basically do anything. So mm -hmm. there's that. Um, I haven't launched any courses or training programs and, years like i've done some webinars and stuff but i mean it's been probably three or four years like since i've really launched a course or anything like that and i felt like there's definitely a need in the marketplace for what i have to offer so i have a list building course that's going to be coming out shortly here and uh just working on lots of other little projects with clients that uh it's it's nice i get to, i get to cherry pick the people that i work with like you guys <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah love it. and yeah. and so and so now you got the list building course coming out obviously you do uh you, you you do contracts to build funnels for people you're going through and do business consulting so there's quite a bit uh vast things that you can help with in regards to marketing for those that are like interested in looking into more where, where can people find that stuff from you um, you can go to uh, adamhollandmarketing.com uh, is definitely one site. Definitely look me up on Facebook, just Adam Holland. Um, I have a couple of, I have a backup profile and then my, my real profile. So the one that's got like maxed out friends, still friend me on that one anyway, but friend me on, uh, friend me on both of them, whatever. <laughs> you know, whatever. You it's all good. Um, so yeah, definitely. I mean, hit me up on Facebook. It's where I'm most active. Uh, and just, you know, regardless of your political affiliation, just ignore anything political that I post on there whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and if you like memes, uh, if you like memes, my Facebook page is, is the place to be because I am the director of memes. That's my title now, <laughs> director of memes. I, 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 I make them, I share them, and uh, you're guaranteed to, uh, to have a smile on your face uh, with, with my memes. So with my memes dude i love it bro this well is good. this was really good dude this is a lot of fun man thank you so much for coming out dude uh really appreciate you having you out here 100%. um yeah dude it's been a blast yeah and man. i mean it's really cool really cool to see the journey that you've gone through um everything leading up to where you've gone i think there's a lot of main points there um especially when you go through like you know, there's a lot of people listening right now that might have gone the route of going to school and, you know, maybe just because it was their parents, parents, you know, path that they went and they thought it was the right way. And so uh, seeing that other people are going that were in that space that were able to kind of overcome that, burn the bridges, burn the diploma, which might actually, you know, make it worth more. Um, and then, <laughs> and then, and so then be able to go on and create, right. And then yeah. go on and, and be able to create what you have is, is just amazing, dude. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming out and sharing that. I, I know everyone will love, love that. So that's amazing, dude. It's, really appreciate you for coming out. It's been a pleasure, man. And thanks for having me out. I love hanging out with, you know, both you guys and just shooting the shit, you know, sharing some stories with everybody. And I hope everybody listening, uh, got something out of this and they can uh, take some inspiration back to their lives, their, their relationships, their business and, and, and everything. So thanks for having me on guys. Appreciate it. Sick. Anytime, brother. Next time you'll be out here. You'll be in, in, yeah. in yeah. the room. You guys, Local. you guys will be pushing me down a slope somewhere. I'm sure, you know, whatever. I yeah. Know. No, like, no. Ah! Throw you on a snowmobile or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Brother.
Well, thank you so much, dude. Appreciate you for all of you guys. Thank you for listening. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Oh, yeah.